Y'all worship with the kids this morning while they sing. <coughs>
goodness. Amen. Amen. Thank you for his mercy this morning as well. Praise the Lord for that. We are going to be in John this morning. John. John chapter number six is where we'll be this morning. John chapter number six. And when you get to John chapter six, I'm going to read the entirety of the chapter. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you haven't got there yet, when you get there, you'll know why that was funny. <clears throat> Nobody wants to listen to me read 71 verses. I don't want to listen to myself, Brother Matt, read 71 verses. But I do want to uh, look here at this text. We'll be in verse number 60. Verse number 60. We'll be in uh, John chapter number 6. And then verse number 60. And when you found your place, let's stand together this morning as we honor the reading of God's Word. It's worth honoring. Amen. His Word is worth honoring. And we should stand in honor of His Word. And I'm thankful that He would allow us to have his word, not a copy of his word. I'm glad I got his word. Amen. Praise the Lord. John chapter number six and then verse number 60. The Bible says many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this said, this is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, doth this offend you? Jesus had to deal with this mess too, didn't he? <laughs> How about that? Isn't that where we're at today? Everybody gets offended. Oh my goodness. Verse number 62. That's a whole other message, whole other day. We'd run that rabbit and don't ever get it killed, I don't guess. But what and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profit, profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. Now, think about that right there because that's going to come into play here shortly. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also Go away. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You can be seated this morning. Thank you so much for standing. And our text here this morning comes from a conversation that Jesus is having with a group of disciples those that have believed and those that have not believed. Now understand this, that just because someone listens to preaching, just because someone comes to church, does not mean that they are born again. Okay? Verse number 64. We find Jesus saying as He is speaking to the many of His disciples, and that what we found in verse number 60. Verse number 60 said, Many therefore of his disciples. Now verse 64 shows us that the Bible says, But there are some of you that believe not. Now, this isn't the message this morning. It'll be a little bit of it, Brother Matt, but let me, let me hit this for just a second. You can claim to be a Christian. You can be a member of a church. You can carry a Bible underneath your arm. You can follow Jesus. These folks here were following the Lord, listening to Him, watching Him perform miracles. Everything that He done in His earthly ministry, Brother Mike Brown, they were right there with Him. And yet, when the preaching started, they got offended. And they walked away. Now, Jesus even says here that they weren't believers. That they believed not. Right? You'll see this morning that there is a difference in coming to church and being born again. They're two different things. It tells me this morning that those folks that were called His disciples 
And the meaning of that word here in this text is actually just people who followed his teaching. They didn't apply it to their life, but they just followed him. Verse 67 asks a question that I want to focus on as our title this morning, as you see up on the board behind me or the, the screen behind me. Verse 67 says, Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? He is asking, Has the truth offended you? Are you going to leave like the others have? So, I want to ask you a question this morning. I want to preach on this thought. Will you stay? Will you stay? I can promise you this. If you've been coming to this church any amount of time in the three years in which I've pastored here, not everything that comes out of this pulpit is pleasant. It's all right. It's right, but it's not pleasant on our theology a lot of times because we got a different idea of what it should be. And But when the Bible disrupts that, we ought to say, oh, Lord, you're right. It's not always pleasant for your pastor to preach. <laughs> it's not always pleasant for your pastor to study for either. But let me ask you this question. As these folks here, the truth was given and many walked away. Many left. So I want to ask you a question this morning. When it gets a little heated, when it gets a little hot, when preaching hurts our feelings and we see that we aren't as good as we think we are. Because Brother Reggie, unfortunately, we got a really high opinion of ourselves. We love us some us. Amen. And my sin's not near as bad as Mike Brown's sin. I can pick his out. But truth be known, mine's probably worse. Yeah. But I don't want to see mine, Miss Jessica. I have no problem seeing yours. Or Reggie's got a ton of it, so I've got nobody's got a problem looking at Brother Reggie's. <laughs> but nobody's got a problem with those things. But whenever it comes to looking in that mirror, looking in that mirror, looking in that mirror, and God showing me what I am, will you stay or will you also go away? He's asking. If the truth offends you, I'm asking you this morning, does the truth offend you? These folk ask, how can any man do these things? It's a hard saying. So when those thoughts cross our minds like that, is how can any man do this? How can any man? It's a hard saying. Will you stay? Will you stay? Brother Mike Brown, how about you pray for us? Help us, Lord. Amen. Coming here to the end of chapter number six, we find some very sad and sobering events that are taking place. Here in these verses, there are people who are following the Lord in his earthly ministry and seem to be following him for some some time. Yet in the preceding verses, we find that as Christ went and taught in the synagogue, and as he was pre er, preaching there in the synagogue uh, of Capernaum, that people couldn't understand the meaning of what he was saying. Now, let me ask you this. If something in my mind is contrary to what Scripture is, what's the authority? Yeah. Scripture's the authority, right? Jesus was speaking as the Word of God. And these people couldn't understand it. They didn't because it's more than they've ever been taught. They've never, they've never heard it like this before. Who, who is this man that says that we're going to have to eat of his flesh in order to, uh, in, in order to have heaven? Who is this man that says we're going to have to do all these different things that we've never heard before? Cause it's always been about us and what we can do and that I can make myself there. And we don't like this whole grace preaching thing. I want to, I want to do it myself. So he's preaching there in the synagogue at Capernaum and there are things concerning Scripture. I'll tell you this morning, Brother Matt, that I don't always fully understand, humanly speaking. But show me in the Scripture where God wants us to understand it, humanly speaking. God wants us to have faith. Amen. That's what all this is built around, is faith. How? How can we this morning, Brother Tom Harmon, 
say that I have faith that God can save me and give me eternal life in heaven. But I ain't got enough faith to believe something in Scripture that my mind says I don't know about that. It happens a lot, Brother Matt. It happens a lot to us. These people here did the unthinkable. They walked away from the Lord. I tell you this, it, it helped me studying this and, and preaching that. Let me say this too. In, in, in doing this, Brother Peter, I don't know who this is for. And I'm praying that it's preventative. But I'm not dumb enough to think that there aren't people in here that's had the thought. I'm not naive enough to think God would have put a message on my heart just to come in here and preach. I'm not naive enough to think that, Brother Danny. I believe this morning that God's got this message for someone or a group of someones or whatever it is. You say, Pastor, who is it? I don't know. God just says, preach it. He deals with hearts. He deals with hearts. It's not up to me to do that. <clears throat> All I can do is preach. All I can do is say, when I when I when God called me to preach, I said, Lord, I, I'll give you the man. You supply the preach. That's all I can do. So I'm just standing for you this morning. But I will tell you this. It got my got me concerned, concerned, if you will, for where we're living at in this day. Because we're living in a time that, Miss Candy, the, we're living in a time that people are all about themselves. And if it doesn't make me feel good, then I'm not going to do it. But if it makes me feel good and there's something in it for me, then I'll stick around and I'll, I'll do that. Or if it gives me my little checkbox, amen, I get phone calls and texts from people quite often. And it's, hey, look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Praise the Lord. I'll see you on. Y'all pray for this, pray for that. Well, I'd love to have you come. Yeah, I'll come see you on Sunday. Great. Come on. You know where we are. And y'all pray for me. I wish I had more faith. But it's proven time and time and time again they never grace the doors of the church. But yet they have no problem calling pastor and saying, hey, or pastor's wife and saying, hey, will you pray for this situation? And I'm thankful that they would have confidence in our prayers. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is you don't just pull God out of your pocket when you need something and rub his little head and say, oh, I need this answered. Oh, thank you. That's answered. We might as well be going into a booth. We ain't no different if that's the case. So, this morning, there'll be a few questions that we look at. I've got three, but we'll probably just concentrate on the first one this morning. And if I ever get to preach the other two, we will. But if not, God's got you what He what He wants you to have. Amen. Y'all pray for Brother Reggie back there. I showed him how many pages I had, and he said, oh, "You ain't getting through that." <laughs> Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all pray for him. He get right with God. <laughs> uh, but in studying this this chapter, we see that people tend to walk away when the Bible destroys their theology, their philosophy on life, or their theology with the scriptures. In studying this chapter, we find that these people walked away from the Lord, and there may be some factors this morning that are in your life that have you thinking, I'll just do something else. I'll go somewhere else. I'll do something else. Am I telling you this morning this is the only church in town? Absolutely not. Absolutely, I'll never tell you that. I'll never tell you there are other churches in this area that you can go be part of. However, if God's told you this is your church, this is your church. Amen. You know how I know that? God told me that's my wife. That's my wife. Amen. If God's put it on your heart to say, I want to be part of this, this is, this is where you should be. Every time the doors are open, minus sickness, minus sickness, I, I keep your germs. Amen. <laughs> I don't want them. But if you were on the roll at Hope Bible Baptist Church, it's not encouraged for you to be back. It's expected. Amen. 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 But there's three questions that we're going to look at. And how you are able to truthfully, 
That's a kicker right there, ain't it, Miss Robin? Truthfully answer these questions will be the difference in whether you are a disciple or a deserter. Amen. You said, Pastor, I don't like the way this starts. I don't like the way God gave it to me neither. But if I can be honest with you this morning, this is my heart because this is how God gave it to me. I'm going to give it to you both barrels same way he gave it to me. But look with me in verse number 66, and I'm going to show you one of the biggest problems in what's going on with Christianity today. What's going on? I can't even use Christianity. What's going on in the church today, the buildings, the organizations, Brother Mike, the clubs, the spirit clubs, the worship centers. Yeah. Verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. <clears throat> now, why did they go back? What did they have to go back to? Why did they go back? Miss Candy, you know why they went back? <laughs> it's because their following was experimental. It's experimental. We find that in so many churches today. Well, has anybody ever heard, well, I tried church. I tried that Jesus thing. Man, you knock many doors at all and you talk to people, they'll tell you, well, I tried that Jesus thing. I, I tried that. I tried this. Well, that's the problem is you tried that. You experimented with the Lord. You experimented with church. You didn't get in. See, if you're going to get, if you're, if you're going to be Happy in Jesus, the old hymn says, you must trust and obey. Yeah. There's no trusting and obeying and trying, right? Experimental Christians or experimental churchgoers is the way I should uh, say it. These folk, they did run well for a bit and then they walked away here in this verse, in verse 66. I've heard it said too many times and I'm tired of hearing it said, Brother Peter, that, well, I've tried that, but it didn't work. I tried to go to Walmart and save money, but it didn't work. <laughs> now, how stupid does that sound? Are you going back to Walmart? Absolutely. I tried to haggle with that guy about the price of my car, but it didn't work. Guess what you walked away with? A payment book because you still bought the car. <laughs> Amen. Can I get a witness right there? Amen. We've all been there, right? Well, it I didn't go my way, but we still did it. Why is it God always gets the short end of the stick? Yeah. That, oh, well, it's because it didn't work in God and, and I don't like it, so I'm going to stop. No, don't stop. Keep moving forward. Amen. We don't stop. That baby's sleeping. Y'all jumping. She ain't, she ain't jumping. <laughs> Hallelujah. I remember when I get loud. I got... Can I say this this morning? That if you tried Jesus and it ain't got better, that's your problem. It's your problem. You didn't let him have control. Amen. What causes people to be experimental and try Jesus and not get sold out to him? It's because of their theology. Their theology is messed up. Their theology is based on their own ideology, their own ideas, and their, their own thoughts. And they just need a little religion. As long as I get my little religion, as long as I do right, and as long as I come get my checkbox on Sunday morning, as long as I come get my checkbox on Sunday night, as long as I come get my checkbox on Wednesday night, then everything's going to be okay. And then I get mad at God when things don't go my way. And then I am crying out, God, why are you forsaking me? And if you had any spirituality about you at all, you'd get that still small voice in your in your spirit that'd say, why are you forsaking me? Amen. There are times that I have hit my knees in prayer and said, God, I'm doing everything I know to do for you. I am doing it all. What in the world is wrong? What, why, why are you not blessing me the way your word says you'll bless me? And then the Holy Spirit says, what about this? And I'm like, no, I didn't want you to know about that. 
And he's like, give that to me. No, I can't give you all of that. No, I can't give you more time, Lord. My goodness, it's going to mess up me surfing the internet if I give you more time to read. It's going to mess me up looking at videos on the YouTube if I do that. It's going to mess me up from watching my favorite program if I read your word instead of watching that. Who's first in our life? Me. Me. Well, God, why are you forsaken? You've forsaken him. I have as well. But, talking to those this morning that have just experimented with Him. People got their own ideology of what it's like to follow Christ. Let me say this. You ain't that good. Amen. You ain't that good that you can do anything. And you know how I know you ain't that good? Because you're human like me. And if the scripture, if that's not enough, the scripture tells us that there are none good. No, not one. But you don't understand. No, you're right. Apparently, I don't. Because the Bible's the final authority, and I don't understand why you don't see that. Hey, we having fun? People approach living for God with the same mentality that they approach a new hobby. I'm going to try this for a while. I, bu I built model cars for a while. You know, you got the, the testers glue and the testers uh, paint and all that. Say, anybody ever mess with model cars? They make you want to talk ugly. <laughs> they do. I'm not, I don't know why I couldn't ever get that wheel on there right. <laughs> My hand just shook like a leaf. I tried that for a little while. Well, you know what ended up happening? I hated it. I built a couple of cars that looked like a kid's drawing in kindergarten. That's what they ended up looking like. But, Brother Mike, I stopped. Why? It wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. You know how you get better at those things? Keep doing it. Oh my goodness, how dare we say apply. Brother Mike McPhail, how dare we try to apply that to God? You know how you get to know more about Him? Read His Word. Come to church. Get involved. Amen. But no, 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 no. I just won't. That's my, that's my line. I ain't going no further, Brother Pete. I don't care what you got to say. I don't care what your Sunday school lesson's about. That's as far as I'm going to go. I don't care what your Sunday school lesson's about. Oh, it was good. Sure, if I step another, mm, it was pretty good. Probably helped me in my life. Nope, I'm stopping right there, Brother Matt. Nah, I don't want nothing to do with that. that. That's my wall right there. Pastor, thanks for the message. Oh, it was so encouraging. I'm leaving. I'm not going to think about it no more. You can say, we don't do that. Yeah, we, we, we do that. Amen. Amen, we do that. Experimental, being experimental in our life. But don't treat God like a hobby. Amen. I just finished reading a phenomenal book about atomic habits. You say, that's not spiritual. Yeah, you apply it to spiritual things. It's very spiritual. But atomic habits, how to make a habit out of things. You can make a habit out of reading your Bible. Do you realize that you can get to the point this morning that your day is garbage? <sighs> If you don't open your Bible. Amen. If you don't open your Bible, if you don't, if you don't pray, then your day is just garbage. I have a friend of mine. Uh, well, I call him a friend of mine. He was a friend of mine. Not, we just don't see each other anymore. Um, but I worked with him at the courthouse years and years and years ago. And he told me, he said, I ain't been running in two days. I said, Oh man. I said, you all right? He said, don't even talk to me today. I said, it's that serious, huh? It affected him mentally. If he didn't get out and run, I told him I'm opposite. It affects me if I do go out and run. <laughs> hey Amen. It affects me. I'm going, oh, I don't want nothing to do. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. I ran this morning. How far? Like 100 yards. Just leave me alone, right? But he'd go out and he'd run three to five miles every morning or every day. And when we had, when we had a lot of rain come through, he couldn't get out. I rode by him one day and he was running. It was monsooning. I said, Alex, what are you doing? He said, I had to go. <laughs> he, but why aren't we that way with our Bible? See, you can, you, you can get physically sick, if you will, if you mess up a routine. Amen. Some of y'all get sick if you don't get your coffee in the morning. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. Right? You go. Now, I, this, is, this is preaching for me too, but are we more dialed into our coffee than we are our Bible in the morning? 
If I don't get my coffee, it's going to be a bad day. Amen. Brother Peter said, yeah, all right. Amen. amen. If Miss Suzanne's watching, she's typing amen all over the screen. Amen, amen, amen. But why, why will we skip our Bible? It's because we're experimenting with Him. We're experimenting with Him. You say, Pastor, I'm saved. Yeah. Good job. Congratulations. Glad you are. It's time we stop experimenting. There's lost in here this morning that are experimenting as well. They're experimenting, don't want nothing to do with God unless there's something for them in that. They take the same approach as we talked about the other night. Remember Thursday night we talked about Abraham? And we were talking about Abraham and I told you how, how people will serve for a reward, not out of obedience. They want that reward, Brother Reggie. And, as long, and I understand, guys, we are a society of, of, of reward-driven people. I get that. I, I do. I get it. I understand that. But, man, I don't serve God. I don't serve God to get the reward. He's faithful that He'll give me those rewards, but that's not why I do it. Brother Mike Brown, I serve Him out of obedience. And that's where we should be. This Rosemary, my obedience ought to be to the Lord. I'll serve Him out of obedience and not out of the reward that He gives me. People, they come to church and, and, and they, they come in and they, instead of coming in and, and saying, what can I do for God? They come in and say, God, what can you do for me? But He's the one, that, he's, He owns everything. What can He do for me? No, 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 no. How about, how about you? Let me ask you a question, guys. Gentlemen. Your spouse. They're sweet to you, aren't they? Say yes, guys. Say yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Marriage counseling after this service. But they're sweet to you. They love you. Right? But if you just every day you walk in the house, you don't say nothing to them. Don't say nothing to them. All it is is where's my supper? Where's my drink? Where's my coffee? Then you go to bed at night and you say, see you in the morning. They ain't going to be as sweet to you in a few days, right? Probably, where's my coffee? Over there, get it yourself before too long. Y'all come to my house, I can show you, right? There ain't going ain't to be a whole lot of lovey-dovey. Here, sweetheart, I love you if I treat her like that. Why do we expect God to do that? Why do we expect? We ain't talked to Him in a month of Sundays. We ain't done nothing that His Word tells us to do. It's drudgery for us to get up and come to church on Sunday morning. It's drudgery for us to come to church on Sunday night. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, Pastor, know that I got a life? Well, yeah, I do. Your life ought to be centered around Christ. Hello. I'm tired on Wednesdays. Hey, Y'all want to know something? I'm tired on Wednesdays. I'm dog tired on Wednesdays. Y'all get to come in and sit. Amen. I get to come up here and talk. We can all do it together. Amen. Amen. But I got, I got more going on than church. Why? Why is that? It's because you're experimental in your worship to Him. You're experimental in your work for Him. You come to church and say, hey, what can you give for me? Y'all, there was a uh, president years and years ago that uh, said, don't ask what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country, right? Y'all remember uh, JFK, right? And I don't know. Hopefully, I didn't cut none of y'all off by mentioning JFK in here. But you can apply that to your church and to your God as well. Ask not what church and God can do for you, but what can I do for my church? Amen. What can I do for my God? See, he, he just loved you enough that he'd save you. Just loved you enough that he'd give his son for you. So why would we not be giving ourselves to him? Because we're experimental in our lives for Him. People that are only looking for life to be better when they come to church, they're looking for God in an experimental way. Folk come to church and when life doesn't get any better, they quit. I can promise you something this morning. Life's probably not going to get better immediately. <laughs> There's going to be tests that happen. There's going to be things that happen in your life that you're going to sit back and think, but I'm saved now. It's supposed to be better. Just hold on. Yeah. Just hold on. It's going to get better. I promise you. 
it's going to get better. Notice a couple things concerning experimental service. People typically do it because they are curious about his power. They just want to know about his power. See, there is a word in verse number 66 that caught my eye. Again, we find the word many. Many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Sad truth here is that many turned. Many of them turned from the Lord and went back to what they had always been. You ask why? Because they weren't serious to begin with. Brother Danny, there are people in this world, people in this community that made a profession of faith because it was situational. They made a profession because of where they were at that current time in their life. I'll never forget a gentleman that used to come to our church. I'd pick his kids up on the bus. He would ride the bus with me from time to time. And um, evangelist came in and preached, and this guy walked the aisle, went up front. Well, that guy led him to the Lord. I asked him later, why? Why would you get saved for? I was expecting, well, I'm a sinner, man. I need to get born again, you know, be forgiven of my sins so I can serve Jesus. That's what I'm expecting, right? Man, I got a court date coming up, and I need all the help I can get. You say, oh, what, did, what, did, what happened to him? He stayed in and out of jail. Still to this day, he's been on the run. He went back to his home state. They found him and they brought him back to, or took him back to North Carolina. Yeah. What are you saying, Pastor? People will get saved in bad situations. I've been in hospitals before. And I'll never forget this one lady. I said, uh, we talked for a bit. I shared the gospel with her. And she said, I, I've, I've gone to church my whole life. I know what you're talking about. I said, well, fantastic. I said, what do you need? What do you need? She said, well, I don't know if I'm going to get out of here. I said, that's not a need. That's a possibility that might not happen. I said, what do you need? And she said, you was that? Yeah, I was. But she was playing. She was playing a game. I said, what do you need? She said, well, I need to make sure that I'm okay just in case. I said, ma'am, you ain't ready. I said, I'll pray with you that God will deal with your heart. I said, but that's between you and him. He said, so you, you might let that woman slip off and go to hell. No, if she was serious, she'd have got right with God. She didn't need me. She didn't need me. But yet what we want is we want the preacher to come in and talk to us, make us feel good and lead somebody. No, nah, no, nah, hey, I've been around people that truly got born again on their deathbeds. Yeah. But you know what? Their lives changed. Brother Mike. They didn't get out of the hospital and say, hey, I'm glad I got that settled. I've got my fire insurance. I'm ready to go. No. I've seen people who were uh, you know, going through situations such as that. They've come to the altar. Those that made professions thinking they weren't going to get out of, out of the hospital. When they did, they're right back to the same miserable life that they once were before. You know why they did, Brother Mike? Because they're experimenting with the power of God. They cared nothing, Brother Tom, about God's power. They just wanted to get out of their situation. It's a sad state to be in, a sad place to be in in your life, if that be the case. They weren't serious. Matthew 7, 13, that word many shows up again. That The broad, the broad is the way to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. There's another many. Is those many that walked away. So are those many that go in that broad way. They wanted to see His power. They saw the miracles and wanted to be part of what Jesus did. And it's kind of like today, they see people at the church that are happy. They see people who have a happy marriage and, and they're like, oh, well, I want to do that. They see people who have kids who, who mind. And, and, and listen, my kids are just as much crazy as the world's kids. We just keep them on a little shorter leash. Yeah. Amen. They got the same sin nature as everybody. But people see that. They're like, oh, well, y'all's relationship, you and your wife's relationship is so good. Well, we put God in the middle. I want some of that. Do you or you just want the outcome of it? I've had people tell me before. So they used to tell my pastor this all the time. So we ain't got a perfect marriage like you. <laughs> yeah, it's far from it, Brother Mike. 
But you know what? As long as I put God in the middle of this, it's going to be pretty doggone good. Amen. As long as I make much of what God is doing, it's going to be pretty good. So they want the power. They see all the things that are going on and they want to see His power work in their life. The problem is, all they're wanting is that reward that comes from His power. They don't want to give anything else. They're experimenting still out of their curiosity for His power. You know what we call those? Sign seekers. I'll do it if God does this. I'll, I'll start living for God if He gets me out of this. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've prayed that prayer. God, if you just get me out of this, I'll do anything you want me to do. Before I was saved, that was prayed a lot. God, if you'll get me out of this situation, I'll do anything you want me to do. Get out of the situation. Don't even remember it. I didn't pray that. I ain't, ain't going to do nothing for God. <laughs> hey, thanks for getting me out. Yeah, great job. That's where we get. We're sign seekers. They're sign seekers. They're just entertained. They want to be entertained by the Lord. They want to be entertained by the things around the church. I'll come to special events. I'll come to those, but get me to an extra service a week. Mm, I can't do all that. But I'll, I'll, I'll come. I'll belly up with you if you want to do it. Well, yeah, we'll come and do all those things. That's great. No, I ain't coming to nothing else. I ain't going to do that. Those are sign seekers. Brother Peter, it's a sad state in which we are because they're experimenting with God instead of giving their life to God. I'll come so long as I get something out of it. Jesus called out this kind of experimental following in his day in Luke eleven twenty nine. 29. You don't have to turn over there, but he said, he said, this is an evil generation. They seek a sign. Listen, Jesus isn't some birthday party magician performing acts on cue. That's not what he is. That's what these guys wanted him to do. All they watched him feed the 5,000 at the beginning of chapter number six. They saw him do all these miracles. They saw him heal lepers. Saw him do all these different things. And well, we, we, we want to be entertained by him. And he's the son of God. The miracles in which he performed were from God above. Now, I told you they fed the six or the 5,000 by the lad's lunch there. But why were they following him? Were they following him because they thought he was the Christ or were they following him, Brother Matt, to see what he could do for them? Let me ask you a question this morning. And I mean this with sincerity. I'm not being a smart aleck when I say this. Why are you here? Why are you here? That's not, that's not a smart aleck comment like, don't you come back, what are you doing in here? No, I'm asking a question. Why are you here? Are you here to get your check mark this morning? Are you here because you've done your duty and I'll see you next week? Why are you here? Are you here to worship the Lord? Are you here to learn more about who He is? Are you here to fellowship with the brethren? Hey, look, you know the beauty of this is? Might as well get to know us real good. We're going to spend eternity together. If you saved, amen. But why are you here? There has to be a reason. That's a question that only you can answer. I'm not here this morning because I'm the pastor here. That's not why I'm here. You say, well, you've got to come. No, I know I don't. I get to come because God allows me to. And we get to gather around the Word of God together. I'm afraid that we're seeing in America the type of Christianity that all they're looking for is physical changes to take place and give little thought to spiritual changes. We have no desire to repent, to be as Christ. We're looking for physical changes on the outside. We want folks to start living better. We want them to stop drinking. We want them to stop smoking this or that or the other, shoelaces. They want, we want them to stop doing all that stuff. But Michael won't we'll start coming to church. And I want all those things. And I can promise you, you get born again, all that stuff takes place. Amen. Amen. But I get real weary in today's Christianity whenever, oh, I'm saved, I love God, but there's no desire to be around God's Word, God's singing, God's people, God's house. I get real, real leery of somebody saying, Brother Mike Brown, 
I love God when it's convenient for me. That, my friend, is experimental. And you end up just like these folks here. We'll finish up right here, but let me give you this and we'll be finished. <clears throat> Brother Peter, what did verse 60 say? That many, many, right? Many would walk away. Many would leave him. Many would go away, right? If you look down through there, I can't remember if it's 64 or wherever it is, but he said there in that scripture that they believed not. So what does that mean, those that believe not, Brother Matt, are lost? Right? Am I, am I twisting scripture in any way right there? No. So the ones that didn't want nothing to do with him because the truth got hard, they turned and walked. Can you imagine what Christ felt like standing there watching the multitudes, the many, turn their back and walk away and looking around at the twelve and saying, y'all headed out to? Where are you going to go? Are y'all leaving behind them? No, they weren't going nowhere because they were. they wanted to serve God. So my question to you this morning, Will you stay? Brother Tom, not a real comfortable message to sit in this morning because truth be known, we've all got areas, Brother Peter, that we can grow. We all got areas in our life, Brother Matt, that we can get closer to God. And we enjoy sitting in our little cubby hole and it's okay, I'll preach to the preach to the sodomites, preach to the drunks, preach to all that. We'll shout that out. Woo, we love that. But whenever it hits home, we realize that maybe we got a little bit of experimenting in our life as well. It's about eyes closed this morning. I want you to think about this for just a moment.